In this first slide, uh, the lady on the left is wearing a Google Glass. Uh, it's a computer you wear on your spectacles uh, so that you could ignore the people around you. Uh, the man in the middle is a twit, and the person on the right is wearing a highly sophisticated hearing device so that he can communicate with everybody. Now, there's nothing new in the way hearing aids are worn. They, in the last 12 months, they're still going either in the ear or behind the ear. They can, they can be very small in the ear, which was a, an innovation from the last one to two years. Uh, but it's the same old story. What has changed, however, is the processing power. This changes all the time. So now Siemens claims that their hearing aids have a processing power 6,000 times greater than that used to put the first man on the moon. 18 million transistors. I have no idea how they fit in there. What they need all that for is to try and get the hearing aids to separate the speech signal that you want to hear from the noise around you. And for those of us wearing hearing aids, we know that they're still working on that and perfecting it all the time. It's, it's a lot more difficult than I think we realise when we go and buy hearing aids. That, say, if you're in a restaurant, the hearing aid is hearing the voice opposite you, the voice beside you, but it's also hearing those same voices repeated as they reverberate off the room. So one of the things that that processing power is used for is to try and get the hearing aid to understand that that speech signal that it's just picked up is actually something it's heard before and to try and scrub that out. Because we're not aligned to any manufacturer, it means that we can fit any hearing aid available on the market. Now, that means from time to time that we can be as confused as you are because new products come out with great claims about how good they are, but it's not until we fit them that we can be sure that the hearing aids are actually as good as the claim. So there are times when we are as confused as you are. Now, what has come out uh, in the last 12 months? Every manufacturer will bring out a new chip about every 12 months. Phonak uh, has the Quest. They've got a tendency to uh, try and come up with programs for every situation you'll find yourself in. Uh, initially, or in the early days, that had the effect of you becoming aware of the changes in those programs. So you'd be walking down the street, you'd turn a corner, suddenly the hearing aid would drop in volume, which was irritating. But now they have perfected that, so you aren't aware that it's actually changing between a quiet mode, speech in quiet, speech in noise, speech in loud noise, which is a new one, just noise and music. It'll make all those adjustments seamlessly because each of those requires a very different response from the hearing aid. Phonak have probably specialised in um, directional microphones for many years and what they're trying to do is narrow the focus of the directional microphone for those situations where you are just trying to hear one person opposite you and ignore everybody else. They refer to that as a stereo zoom. They also have a speech in wind program uh, where they you press a button and the one the aid on the windy side is attenuated and the speech is then directed across to that ear. The smart volume now, you don't have a volume control and these features are available in other manufacturers as well, but when you change the volume in the aid, it recognises the situation you're in and uh, n not just change the volume, but maybe also increase the noise reduction if it recognises that there's noise in that situation. The Duo phone, once again available in a number of manufacturers, is where you press a button, uh, or you could set it up automatically, but I prefer pressing the button. You put the phone to the aid, and 
the voice is streamed to the other ear as well, so you hear in stereo. Nice feature. Otacon have the outer. They tend to do things slightly differently. Uh, their interest is in ensuring that the speech signal you're trying to pick up uh, is uncompressed. Now, compression is the basis of hearing aids because what we're trying to do is amplify a signal and then put it into a narrower range of hearing. So you don't hear soft sounds, so we've got to amplify those and put them into the region you can hear. But the problem with compression has in the past been that it creates a distortion, so the voices aren't clear. So what Otacon does is latches onto the speech signal and removes the compression so that the amplification is clear, but then adds the compression either side so that you're not bothered by loud noises. They also have this feature they call U-matic, where um, they look at uh, the age of the person, the sex of the person. Uh, believe it or not, research has discovered that men like more volume than women, so they've got to take that into account. Uh, and also the situation, the, sort of the life situations you're going to be in to decide how fast you want the aid to react. Widex has brought out the dream. Their main feature is that uh, they recognised that one of the problems with hearing aids is that they just weren't capable of um, inputting a very loud sound. Because they couldn't do that, they tended to clip the sound and in clipping the sound, uh, they created a distortion that stayed with the aid. So what they've done is increase the, um, the minimum limit They also have a website now, so if you get a Widex hearing aid, you can go to their website and it'll have information about your hearing aid. Siemens have brought out the Micon. Uh, it's a nice little aid. I haven't actually put much on there about Siemens, apart from 48 channels. Uh, the number of channels refers to what they do with the um, information or the, the frequency band. In this case, 48 channels is a, a lot of channels, so they dice up the frequency band and then make adjustments in each of those bands. The smartphone app, uh, Starkey, <coughs> did a similar thing where you can use your iPhone as a volume control and in this case, I think a program uh, changer as well. Interestingly, in one of the early forms of that, uh, you did have your iPhone, which could uh, make adjustments to the aid, but the problem was, in a noisy situation, the aids couldn't hear the iPhone. It, it was listening to the buttons. That's the sort of thing they don't tell you uh, when you fit the aid. The Lyric, uh, the hearing and balance setter, fits the Lyric. I think we're the only ones in the eastern suburbs. The, this is a device that was bought uh, by Phonak from a company in California. It stays in the ear for uh, two to three months, a bit like um, a contact lens, and then you, you come back, we pull it out and put another one in. It's not a cheap option because you, you've got a subscription that lasts 12 months that gives you about seven hearing aids per ear, uh, and then you have to keep renewing that subscription. But for the people who want something that they don't have to worry about, uh, it's proving very successful. And now with their new version, which is smaller and softer, we're getting a very good success rate. Some other features uh, common to a number of manufacturers is frequency compression or transposition. Uh, this is the idea where some people have no hearing yeah in their higher frequencies. So what the hearing aid can do is take those higher frequencies and push them into a lower region that you can pick up. Now, Phonak and Siemens uses compression where they compress it into a lower region. Widex uses transposition where they take the high frequencies and 
plonk them on top of the lower frequencies. With the tinnitus programs, uh, Widex, Resound, Phonex, Siemens and Starkey, they're all coming up with a program to help people to not be as aware of their tinnitus. This can either take the form of uh, fractals, which are computer generated sounds, uh, that's one of the options with Widex, or white noise, which will be occurring at the same time as the aid is working as a hearing aid, or you can have uh, pink noise or narrowband noise, so you can focus on the frequency where the tinnitus appears to be occurring. Accessories. Uh, Bluetooth accessories for hearing aids are, are very good uh, for things like your mobile phone and the television. They get rid of the distance, uh, so for the television, between you and the TV, and it's like you've got headphones on. Lovely approach. The manufacturers now have remote microphones, so if there's somebody in particular that you want to be able to hear, they can wear the microphone and the signal goes from that microphone directly into your hearing aids via another device um, over about 20, 20 to 30 metres, depending on the device. That's, uh, once again, a very nice feature in that particular situation where there's one person that you want to talk to. So they'll just put it on their lapel and you can wander down the street and listen to what they're saying. Uh, now, given that every manufacturer does it, they don't all do it in the same way and some of them uh, remove noise but better than others. Ingress protection. Uh, for those of us who have been fitting hearing aids for many years, it's been very irritating that the biggest um, fault uh, has been corrosion due to moisture. What the industry is doing is using um, a standard that's used by other electronics manufacturers to try and come up with a code that they can um, uh, meet. That's the IP code. Now, there, there are two numbers on the IP code. Uh, the first number relates to uh, dust protection, and the second number is for water. With dust, they put the hearing aid into a chamber for eight hours and there's um, very fine talc and a fan and uh, if the hearing aid makes it out of there and once it's dusted off, uh, works, then it'll get an IP rating of five. Uh, if there's no dust inside, you get a rating of six. With water, uh, you start off putting the aid through jets, as you can see in the top slide, um, and after 30 minutes of that treatment, you should be able to uh, open the battery compartment, take the battery out, dry it out, put the battery back in, and it should work, or we'll probably put in a new battery. Uh, a rating of six means that they've been strong jets, seven and you can drop the hearing aid into a meter of water for 30 minutes take it out take the battery out dry it out and once again it should work an ip rating of eight is where you can have it in water for extended periods effectively um, waterproof the problem with ip rating is that it's not uh, dealing with the real life situations it's, it's never water that's the issue, it's perspiration or um, hairspray, other chemicals that uh, causes the aid to, to stop. Therefore, we can say that at least they're coming up with a test, but it's, it's not a real life test. Uh, and interestingly with these two fellows, it's, uh, one of them um, is underdressed and it's Kevin Rudd because he doesn't have earmuffs on. <laughs> now, with the IP rating, uh, Siemens Aquarius IP68 means that it's dustproof and waterproof. So, if you want to go swimming with a hearing aid, 
Uh, the Siemens Aquarius, I think, is the only one that'll do the job. As f and it's quite a nice little hearing aid. Uh, as far as maintenance is concerned, they would recommend that you take it in uh, to the hearing centre and uh, get it overhauled every year. The thorny issue of price. When you go to a lot of hearing centres, uh, unbeknownst to you, the audiologist or audiometrists are working on commission. So they will tend to push you to the more expensive aids because they get a bigger commission. But you don't really need to do that. Uh, good hearing aids were produced you know, several years ago those hearing aids are now there at a lower price point. So the technologies keep improving and as they improve they filter down to the lower prices. So I'd say that for under $1,500 you can get a very good hearing aid from any of the manufacturers. So don't think that you've got to uh, go to the top of the range. Uh, if Going to the top of the range means that this hearing aid is going to stay with you until you know, it gets cremated. You're better off going to one that's less expensive so that um, maybe in a few years' time or five years' time you think, OK, I'll get another one. And make sure that you go somewhere where they offer the full range because um, at any time one manufacturer will have something that probably beats the others. But I would say from experience that they roll over. You know, every manufacturer will produce something that's very good. And uh, after all, we don't all need to go to the moon. Thank you very much.